they people try to put, oh, he's a seventy year old man. He's an old man. He ain't that ain't that old. Let me, let me, let me grand scheme. I mean, he's older. Don't get me wrong. You know, he's senior citizen, but still, when you look at the grand scheme of things, you know, if when you hit when you hit seventy five, then I sit there and say, okay, you old man, old woman territory. But you still don't get a pass from me. Donald Trump was well. He he, he gets on social media. He understands social media. Donald Trump knows what's going on around him, so he ain't old. Old person to me is a person who just can't function, don't know how to do shit, don't know what's going on around. I'm sorry. I know that's people say well, that that can be anybody. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is or whatnot, but just that I don't consider them old yet. I really don't. But the thing is, Donald Trump and people like him have been getting stopped on the wrist for years in the media. And a lot of us in the black community have seen to allow it to happen. We don't boycott anything. We don't demand anything. That's why people feel they can keep doing what they do to, do to us. And when, during the election, black, the black community got blamed <clears throat> excuse me, for uh, things that we shouldn't get blamed for. Like when Donald Trump was coming to Chicago back in what? what was it December or January of last year? No, was it Jan Yeah, it was January of last year. He knew what side of town he was going. He knew where he, he was going. He didn't go up on the north side uh, to one of those colleges or one of those auditoriums. He didn't go on the um, uh, uh, in the heart of the uh, south side in those neighborhoods. He went over to U uh, U uh, UIC and on the west side. We knew the area was in flux. He knew there was still blacks that lived in the area, a small percentage now. He knew that the, the uh, trust fund baby was moving back in there. He knew the Hispanics were still up in there. And the so people that came to support him came from Indiana. A large number of them came from Indiana. A large number came from downstate uh, Illinois. And a lot of them came out of the west suburbs and from uh, Wisconsin. And I'm going to tell you all something. You ain't never seen that many white folks up in that, in that, uh, um, in that building before. You know, because the UIC Flames play over there. And um, he knew that if he got some good old boys, especially young ones, to, to get in the face of the black dudes from Chicago, it had been, it had been a conflict. But it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. But the media presented it as such. I remember watching MSNBC and Chris Matthews was making like, on the, on the, on the west side of Chicago. Oh, no. He, no this is how I say Chicago West, because you know they say Chicago South, they never say it like we said. And they kept pointing to this one brother. Then this one brother, he's out here, he the one was one of the people that got them the push for that Laquan McDonald video to be released. And I'm watching and I'm watching how the cameras is following dude. And I noticed all the white people kept going towards the black people first. And the white guys are throwing punches and the white women are yelling. You can see them yelling nigger and everything. But once you got outside, it was the Asians, it was the Hispanics, it was the Arabs that was out there fighting and throwing punches, really getting violent and stuff. <clears throat> and so the media kept portraying it. Fox, CNN, all kept portraying it as, as if the black community was the one being the aggressor. And I said, oh, I see what's about to happen with this. And that's when y'all started hearing me saying, yo, we might need to be the, be the not that this be a protest. You know, because I see what I see where it's gonna go, and then every time they did, they had a, 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 a protest. The Trump supporters became physically violent towards the black supporters, but the black supporters very rarely was throwing punches. It was the Hispanic, the Arab, and the Asian that was doing this shit. So you sitting there watching this shit, and you and you sitting there like, I see what they're gonna do. They're gonna make us the uh, uh, the uh, the campaign. Um, Rhetoric on the face of the, of the anti-Trump. That's why y'all can hear me saying, "Don't become the face of it." <coughs> Excuse me. So what happened was, after a while, I noticed that the Democrats wasn't saying anything about the racism that was coming out. They wouldn't say shit. Trump, uh, Obama, Clinton. They if they did talk about it, they talked about it in vague, open terms. They would talk about immigrants and then women. Then people of color. And they know they never said why I said people of color. But it wasn't 
everybody of color getting threatened or being threatened in front of a camera being shot and killed. You know, and then they kept going after the Black Lives Matter movement. And like I said, I got my issues with it because it's the gay community that have used that as, as a backwards way of trying to leapfrog over the heterosexual black community because the gay white community has showed them that they need them. They used them for 20 some years and now they try to be slick. But anyways, you had white celebrities out here talking, oh, the Trump supporters are not necessarily racist. Uh, I don't know about that, but when I hear the word nigger, you people take America back, we're going to kill you, blue eyes matter, all the other good shit, states rights, they be said, chances are they talking about killing black folk. Remember, Dylan Roof went out there and shot that church for a reason. He didn't go shoot a bunch of Hispanics. He didn't go shoot a bunch of Arabs. He didn't go shoot a bunch of Hindu. He didn't go shoot a bunch of gays. He went to the black church. And Comey, head of the FBI, the one that helped Putin and them get Donald Trump elected, he wouldn't call it terrorism. Now, he now he was wanted to be a white supremacist. He wants to be a martyr. They wouldn't call it. Nancy Pelosi, none of them called, called Dylan Roof a terrorist, a domestic terrorist. None of them. Not one. During the election, when it got even more blatant in racism, hell, even when Donald Trump gave his inaugural speech, it was aimed towards the black community. And I kept yelling at y'all, I said, brothers and sisters, don't march with these people. Don't do like Occupy Wall Street where y'all marched with them and they was talking about their jobs and they left y'all hanging. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I told y'all, slowly but surely, they make us the face of, of the anti-Trump resistance. I keep telling y'all. And, and, and so all of a sudden, these Syrians... It, uh, not just Syrians, but the Iraqis and, and Somalis, all these people from that part, those seven countries that Donald Trump said, ah, we don't want you, we don't want, want you coming to America. Now all of a sudden they talking about racism. All these countries like Apple, Lyft, uh, 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 Uber, Next, uh, Netflix, Starbucks, you, all Facebook, all of them come out of the world and talk about, we got to stand with these people. These are you know, these people are not American citizens. A lot of them are not, and some are. Some have dual citizenship, but for the majority of them, they're not American citizens. Now, all of a sudden, Nancy Pelosi and them want to start talking racism. Now, they want to call Steve Bannon and them a white, white supremacist. Not all right, like they were saying before, in doing the election, they saying white supremacists. Now, if you guys not are familiar with Steve Mannion, you ought to be ashamed of yourself if you're a black person. And especially if you've been following my videos, Professor Black Truth, Jason Black, Divide Show, Knowledge, uh, Sean James, uh, 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 the consistent brothers out here. We've been yelling about this shit. Oh, Jay Miller also. We've been yelling for the longest about the media, who's racist, and what we need to be watching out for. They look like we all are prophets at this point. All the shit that we've been yelling about, all the shit that our so-called liberal allies have told us that we've been paranoid about, now all of a sudden they're talking about it. Remember we all kept saying stop calling them alt-right? Now they want to yell white supremacists. I'm going to tell you why. It wasn't until the people that was coming from those countries got their nigga moment. All of a sudden they want to start talking about Steve Bannon. He's the real power. I said that months ago. But what gets me is people like John Stewart, um, uh, uh, Zoe Zanata, uh, Nicole Kidman, uh, um, Matthew McConaughey, all these so-called motherfucking liberals or motherfuckers that made their money off us. All of a sudden, we need to give Donald Trump and them a, a chance. So one minute, y'all say we got to fight Donald Trump. Then when black folks start catching hell, all of a sudden, we're paranoid. But then when they and their friends or their business interests start to get fucked up, now y'all want to yell white supremacists. Brothers and sisters don't fall for it. Let me tell you another story. The other day, I'm looking at my channel, and I noticed my counsel fucked up. And you can monitor your monetization and shit. So I get a message from YouTube saying we can't monetize this video because of the content. Now, in my video, I don't say nothing hateful about anybody. 
I make sure I'm, I'm very careful what I say in my videos. I can insult you without coming across hateful and spiteful and shit. And I, I got got a mess. I contacted them like, what, what's hateful? They can never tell me. And then I notice I go to other people's channels. And I'm noticing their, their accounts are fucked up. And, I'm, and, and I know some people sit there and say, hey, you know, our accounts, our channel accounts have been messed up. And then people that I blocked that was leaving the nigga comments on that Syrian video, all of a sudden was coming through. And I said, oh, I get it now. You don't want black folk to be thinking like, hey, wait a minute. Why are we sitting with these people? These people basically gave us the middle finger the last nine years or actually the last 30 years. And, and, and why should we go out and, tell, and support these different groups? Look how the videos where a lot of brothers saying, hey, stand down. Don't stand with these people. Hey, don't support these women. Hey, those, those videos are getting uh, trolled heavy. See, the liberals want you, don't want you to uh, set the tone. They want us to be on, on, on this, this so-called uh, plantation of, of Democrats. And I'm sorry. I know that there's some things the Democrats say that appeal to the black community. But you remember, the Democrats forgot about us the last nine years. And like I said, I voted for Clinton because there was no other choices. I'm just being honest with you. And people say, we should vote for Bernie Sanders. Y'all need to go back and look at Bernie Sanders' record. Don't take Kasi protests in Chicago 1961 or two, whatever year it was, that he's down. That was 50-something years ago. People changed during the 50-year time period now. Bernie Sanders didn't talk to black journalists. He talked to that illegal, that is, that 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 Asian slash Hispanic journalist, uh, journalist, the one, the Jose Vargas, whatever his name is, I think it's Jose Vargas. Yeah, the Black Lives Matter to females, those are about much, it was rude to him. It was a bunch of couple munches, but for the most part, Sanders didn't come to our community. Sanders didn't speak. Sanders was the first one to say, "Oh, no reparations." When you say no reparations to the black community, after you guys constantly get reparations from American taxpayers, me and you included, I don't hear nobody say nothing. Look how, I mean, all of a sudden, all these people that have been rude to the black community, now all of a sudden, y'all want to say white supremacist. Uh-uh, I'm sorry, but you can't do that now, Nancy. You can't sit here and start saying, well, Steve Bannon is a white supremacist. Wait a minute. When black folks was yelling this shit, been yelling this shit for years, y'all told us, oh, I wouldn't say that. We don't know what's in somebody's heart. See, this is one thing the Republicans can get the, the liberals on, the hypocrisy. See, everybody want to say, oh, the right, the right, the right. Look, I'm not a Republican. I can't stand the Republican Party because they do in, embrace racism. But the Democrats act like they don't. Like Bill Maher, on his show the other night, he was talking about the Muslims, they do this in their country. And then he said, the, the liberals, this false equivalent. And then he tried to talk to Professor Dyson. It made it like, black, yet again, the black community had no reason to be arguing about what's going on. First of all, look, for hundreds of years, the black community been terrorized. They, we still are terrorized to this day. The motherfuckers that get on social media openly say they want to do harm to us. YouTube. Any of these other video sites, these these websites, these social media sites don't do nothing. But let a black person say, hey, man, let's not stand with these other groups. Let's flag the videos. Let's do this. Let's take the videos down. Y'all want black folks to be y'all backup. Y'all want the black folks to be your cannon father. Or y'all want us to be deaf, dumb, and blind. Just vote straight Democrat. I keep telling our brothers and sisters right now, we got an opportunity to manipulate people in the votes. Now, people say, why would you say manipulate people? Everybody else get to manipulate people. Why don't we? Why don't we go out there and, and, and tell Republicans, Democrats, hey, y'all better do this or we ain't going to do that. Tonight on WGN, um, the, the, uh, the, not the Superstation, but W guys, some, oh, WGN America, what are they calling now? They don't get the WGN news anymore. I guess they they, they, they said it's too much of, of a local program or whatever. But anyways, if you guys go to a website tonight, they're going, to air, they're going to talk about President Obama and his legacy. And one brother said, I'm happy he got in there. The other brother said, well, he said he didn't want to be president of the black community. And guess what? He wasn't a president to our community. We came under attack more by under this administration than any other. People talk about how Lyndon Johnson was a racist, but we got the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act under Lyndon Johnson. 
Where have we got under any of these presidents? Serious, other, b besides him. We ain't got shit. Clinton uh, made me the three strikes. He gave the Republicans they want. He did welfare reform. It's a reason why our communities look the way they look. I mean, it's, it's a lot of reasons, but the liberals, them so-called liberals, they sit back and they try to, then they throw it out like, oh, Nancy Pelosi saying he's a white supremacist because as soon as we hear white supremacists, us and the black, and the black guy ears perk up. Don't fall for it. Because before that, they wasn't saying white supremacists. They were saying alt-right or they wasn't saying nothing at all. When they when, when that motherfucker, uh, O'Keefe, lied on um, on Acorn and then later showed Sherrod, the Democrats had control of the Congress and Senate at that point. Then they voted to fund um, Acorn. That's again now you hear the Democrats saying that in, in the other night Bill Martin, he, he was he wasn't joking. He said the black community didn't come out of vote. And Professor Dice said the black community did. But Professor Dice did it in such a way like, yeah, no, we we voted. You just wasn't gonna get Obama numbers. You was never you're never gonna get those numbers again. And I'm gonna tell you something, even if they ran another black person. And, and, and that black person see them be born down on Obama. It never happened again because apathy. Because once the black community get burnt on that level, we done. Which is sad because there have been a lot of brothers and sisters could have made change your local and state level. There are a lot of black business could survive. But don't let them white liberals manipulate you. Like I'll give you an example. Young Turks, certain videos they don't they 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 don't do to uh, weeks later after we didn't done our videos, they watching our channel. Look how they defended Casey Affleck versus Nate Parker and Bill Cosby and whatnot. Look how they, they glossed over uh uh the uh oh what's his name? The Collins dude from um Seven Heaven the Father. See, we know what the Republicans are or people to the right. And let me let me let me correct that people to the right. Every Republican ain't racist. I know it's hard to believe. Some of them just got different political beliefs, you know, just that just so happened when they, the party leans because there are people when the Democrat Party is racist and we and we see them uh, make make exception to that. So there's no one party got a, a foothold on who's more racist. I take that back. The Republicans do. <laughs> just got to keep it real, though. But the liberals are just as racist. It just they know how to come at us real nice. They come with that damn smile. They got that dagger right behind their back. And, they, and when we turn our back, they stab us and twist it. And that shit don't heal. Nancy can keep that white supremacy shit. We know who Banyan is. We know what they are. But don't sit here and try to use it now for a political fight. See, this is what, see, and the Democrats are going to roll over on, on, on the Supreme Court thing. But see, Obama and, the, and Nancy Pelosi and all was trying to be too smart. They could have put a black woman up there. They could have put a black man or a black woman. More so, a black woman should have been up there. And I've been saying that way before. Roland and everybody else started saying that. I said, y'all, put a sister up there. I said, because now the Republicans are going to be forced to show who they, how they are. And they can't get around it because they're going to say something stupid. Why do you think they went after Eric Cole? He's the first black attorney general because they know what kind of power that wields. That's why they want Sessions. Sessions is a good old boy. Notice the Democrats ain't saying shit. See, as long as you 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 fuck us over and keep us dumb, dumb and blind, they can do what the fuck they want. Remember, the Democrats said, fuck the black community. We want the Hispanic vote. You want motherfuckers that came in this country illegally. Not all, but a large number of them. And now they voted for which I told y'all they were never gonna vote for the Democrats. The Democrats are gonna get them, get them in to get them protected, but they're gonna run to the Republicans. Because they chased after that whiteness. And some of the Hispanics said, we can't be white with the niggers next to us. We can't know. We got to separate ourselves. So you get your John Stewart them telling us, hey, don't say this and then turn around a few weeks later and say this and that. Fuck y'all. Fuck these liberals. And I'm going to say this again. I am not a Republican. I do not lean politically right. I'm an independent, meaning I am an independent thinker. But all of a sudden, for Nancy Pelosi to start saying white, white supremacists, like, what was this talk at before? Y'all, we don't know it's in one's heart. Or they would duck and dodge around the questions. No, what they're doing is they realized that the last week on social media and different black folks are saying, hey, don't y'all step in this? They see all these companies that them running to the, to the, to these, 
of other groups' defense. Like they keep saying, we can't deport all these people. There's 11 million people. Wait a minute. Y'all deport black folks and put black folks in jail every day. See how y'all change your rules? Like, look, you put us in jail for marijuana and, and crack cocaine over the years. Now that shit hitting suburbia, all of a sudden, we got to come up with mental health programs. Here it is. You put black folks in jail, but now the government got giving money and giving people the ability to get dispensaries. When it behooved them to say, okay, you know what? The black community got hit hard by the drug war. When it makes sense to go get, see some people apply for it, and government saying like, "Okay, we going it's gonna be government over, gonna be oversight," which I uh, understand, okay, but we are gonna let you guys put some dispensaries in your community. Black folks have chronic pain. Black folks have cancer. That's the help. Why don't you do that? You let a bunch of trust fund babies and foreigners do it, but they the ones that brought the shit in the community in the first place. But see, our brothers and sisters in the community don't don't ain't paying attention. We too busy jaw jacking all the stupid shit. And then you sit and then you sit there and you try to get people to think, and when they realize, aha, 20, 30 years and went past, and you're like, oh. Don't let the Democrats or these so-called liberals manipulate you now. Because, I mean, just look at it. John Stewart, all of them, Donald oh, Trump and their supporters are not racist. The, 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 uh, the, the people are not racist. Then look what they say. Kellyanne Conway got caught lying about a terrorist attack. She get caught. She didn't lie so many times during the, the campaign and after. And Chris Massey said, like, now, he's supposed to be this motherfucker who know about history, but you just sitting there, kind of people up there at the head of NBC Comcast. They said, don't say nothing. Donald Trump is our friend. This is why I told y'all they was going to start purging so-called black talent. But see, a lot of people don't want to listen to us too late, but don't let the Democrats fool you. They just as rotten and they, been, and, they been, and they threw us under the bus the last nine years. Black America came under attack by law enforcement, by media, by everybody. And now, because last week they realized, wait a minute, where are black friends at? Where the black community at? Why ain't they come out and protest? When they did that women's march, they saw the reaction from the black community. Uh-uh. They get spooked when we start thinking for ourselves. Think about it for a second. All of a sudden, video counts are getting messed up with the Syrian videos and shit. If y'all put a video, go look at y'all counts all of a sudden. Especially if you're a partner. Look, look, look what they doing. Look, they, look how what black said. Don't don't stand, don't march with Hispanics. Those all Hispanic trolls come to our channel all of a sudden. We don't have to put don't march with Hispanic. You say just don't do this, and then all of a sudden they, you get a flood of people you ain't never seen before. It was like when I was talking about um, Tamara. All of a sudden you get women coming to the channel. All of them it can't all be bad wenches. Some of them are trolls. You know, see, what it is, they do not want black people, especially heterosexual black men, talking about these issues, pointing people in, into the right direction. See, as long as you keep black folks deaf, dumb, and blind, and keep us spending our money and voting straight, straight Democrat, they can manipulate us. Notice the Tea Party. Where that Tea Party at? Oh, the Tea Party came in existence. Y'all remember that dude worked at CNBC? The one that won that rap and did Sarah Payne? That's how the Tea Party started. And for about a good five years, almost, they had a voice. Now, you, all them weird-ass motherfuckers sitting in office right now are direct result. But they've been quiet for the last three years. Well, I don't know why they've been quiet for the last three years. They don't need, they, they, they not need it anymore. Eric Cantor, that so-called Jew, he sat there, when they asked him about the racism, he sat there, he, um, I don't know. You can't tell us that people heart, but they got he got his ass off, and he got he got his his nigga moment as well. Bam, used to cry all the time. <laughs> they got rid of his ass. Anybody that they they figured wasn't a hard line white supremacist, they got rid of their ass. And Nancy Pelosi and them did for years. What's that? James Clyburn. Why don't he in a leadership position? He's been around for years. Everything turned around. It was Harry and Nancy Pelosi. Then they went and got that old, old the uh uh used to be the head of the Democratic thing. What's up? Uh, Wasserman Schultz and them, and she got on Bill Maher and said why why she why they why they, the Democrats and them should support them because they don't support Jewish causes. These motherfuckers openly say this shit, and black folk we get blamed for it. But then they want to come in and say today, look, I'm sorry, I ain't Superman. 
I ain't gonna be, I'm not gonna come and let motherfuckers keep manipulating me or my people. Now, like I said, I've been politically aware since I was a kid. And like I said, it's because of the environment I grew up in. But some of y'all better start paying attention. Yeah, I know Fox make you sick to the stomach. Yeah, I know CNN make you sick to the stomach. I know a lot of us felt betrayed by MSNBC. I get that. But y'all better start watching these, these programs. Y'all better start 